Hi, everybody. Welcome to a special edition of Sprubers, my scale model universe. And if you are following my buildup of the Ares 1B uh, from 2001, uh, you'll know that I've been talking extensively about uh, the, the, the research and hoping to get to the uh, Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences Museum to take a look at the actual filming miniature. And then uh, I started sort of doing some, just some sort of, I just was looking around YouTube just to sort of see what was going on. You know, there's a lot of people who claim to be authoritarians about um, uh, this particular subject, and I say God bless them. But I thought it would be fun for us here to have our own research papers. So this is a sort of special video uh, that I'm putting up uh, prior to the next uh, update, which will happen. Um, it'll happen on Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday of next week. Uh, that'll get you caught up to where we are on this build. But uh, I did manage to get to the museum and I took some extensive photos. And I also have some really interesting research materials that I wanted to share with you. So the purpose of this video is really to share with you a whole bunch of research just so that you can have it and refer to it if you want to, if you want to. So here goes. Um, the first thing I wanted to, to, to talk about is this. Uh, this book here um, is called 2001, uh, A Space Oddity, The Making of Stanley Kubrick's Movie. Now, it's a Tashin book, and uh, it was actually by Piers Bizzoni, or Bizzoni. And um, this book, which is sort of in the shape of how, <laughs> is uh, a beautiful thing. It weighs a ton. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's available for um, uh, about $100 on eBay or Amazon. Uh, you can definitely find used versions of it. But let's start here um, and get you close up on this particular photo because this is kind of a little bit of where it all begins, really. Um, so the, the text for this photo at the bottom of the page says uh, that this is the Ares miniature seen here during modifications to add great, greater detail to it. Um, so the actual filming miniature was 27 inches in diameter. Um, and it says that very few props from 2001 survive today. But this one is a rare exception. And in March of 2015, it was acquired by auction from a private owner by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for over $340,000. And there it is. And um, you can see that in this photo, um, there is a, um, there's, there's some additional appliques uh, being made to raise everything. Um, so ju just to give it sort of m much more of a, a 3D visual effect. Now, the interesting thing about this photo as well is uh, you'll notice the starkness of it, the white, the, the extreme starkness of it. Now, um, from doing my research, I discovered that Stanley Kubrick really liked that sort of clean, stark look against the space, you know, against space. And that's how he wanted everything sort of filmed, that kind of just quiet stillness and that, that sort of lack of, of um, you know, light sources, as it were. But I know that his special effects team convinced him to add uh, some contrast just to, just to give this miniature uh, s something uh, when they filmed it. So um, anyway, he caved and he agreed to let them do that. And so uh, they were able to start putting uh, a little extra contrast on it. And what you're seeing uh, again in this picture is all of that contrast being added prior to them um, sort of putting some final coats on it. Um, and so that is uh, essentially um, why, why this picture looks the way it looks. Now, um, I wanted to start here, if I could with this picture here. 
So this is the first picture I took of the Ares 1B filming miniature as it appears today at the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences Museum in Hollywood. This is how it looks. And uh, you, you'll see uh, on this picture that um, all of the shadowing and the contrast uh, starts to really punch there. Um, and obviously there was a lot of weathering as well. So as, as, as you sort of approach this thing, it, it's, quite, it's quite awesome to see it, you know, to go, oh, okay, here it is. But there's a lot of people who say, you know, ah, they messed with it, they restored it, it's not quite the same. Yes, it is the same. Uh, it absolutely is the same. I have taken great pains to look at this filming miniature against all of the other production stills, not just from Kubrick's private collection, but from another book called The Science of 2001, which I'll share with you in just a minute. And I've looked detail to detail. Now, there are some repairs that were done uh, to the model. The windows uh, were definitely uh, cleaned up and uh, were damaged. And um, there was some separation and that was cleaned up. Um, but uh, for the most part, there was nothing added to this miniature. Now, you could say that there was some, uh, some fresh weathering done, but I'm not entirely sure it was overly done. I think they augmented what was already there, but they didn't add anything and they haven't subtracted anything. And what you will see in a few minutes is some of the detail that is lost in the Mobius model that uh, perhaps if you wanted to try and be a little more canon or go for some bigger detail elements, you can certainly do. And we'll show you those in just a second. So let's press on here with this book because it shows you um, the uh, Ares 1B in flight. And um, I'll try to get you a little closer to this picture here. And so um, you can see uh, we've got uh, scorching here, which you can certainly uh, duplicate. Uh, you've got some scorching here on these shields. Um, and you can see a lot of uh, weathering on the feet. And uh, of course, some of the other elements of the undercarriage of the engine compartments. Um, moving on to the next picture, which I, I, I like to show you in the book, is this picture, which I think is curious. Um, the, the, the sort of ra some rather strange uh, elements here in terms of weathering or, you know, dust hits or fuel marks. This one in particular is interesting because obviously this was uh, some kind of a venting nozzle. And you can see where they've actually added some, uh, some weathering to that. Um, and then uh, as you go forward in the book, uh, you start to get, uh, you know, you get a, a view of this model that um, uh, is obviously a, a from the film perspective, but we never got super tight like this. But uh, this gives you a wonderful sort of look at all the various different weathering elements uh, that they put in this model. But for the most part, curiously, this is a very clean, mo uh, very clean filming miniature from that perspective. So um, that, that is uh, some excellent photos in this, uh, this book. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a thing of beauty, great fun. So if you're a fan of this film, uh, save your shekels and get it because I think it's, I, I think it's really worth it. The other, the other book I wanted to share with you is this one. Uh, this is 2001, The Lost Science. This was by uh, Frederick uh, Ordway, um, um, and it's from the U.S. Space and Rocket Center archives, uh, the blue line drawings, images, and documents, um, and um, from uh, Adam Johnson was the was the uh, compiler and I guess slash author of this. And this is another excellent excellent reference book. Now um, I've seen um, uh, first editions of this going for three or four hundred dollars, but I've also seen it online for about a hundred and forty hundred and fifty dollars um, if you choose to want to pick it up. 
um, it's a great uh, it's a great reference book to have in your collection and it's just something if you're a fan of the film or science fiction in general or filmmaking it's it's an extraordinary um, uh, piece of research but what I wanted to show you which is a lot of fun is that on um, on this particular page which is sort of the start of um, of it all in in this book um, <clears throat> it, it, it talks about the reality of what it would have been. And it says that the Ares 1B would have been probably 42 feet in diameter, um, a space to moon, moon to space shuttle. Um, it was designed to transport 24 passengers and four crew members between the space station and the moon. It is identical to the Ares 1A without passenger windows, whose sole function was to transport cargo to the Clavius moon base. The onboard computer systems and cockpit design are identical to the Orion 3, a well-stocked galley supplied by Whirlpool houses and sophisticated automatic kitchens on the lowest deck by the entry door to supply passengers and crew with snacks, meals, and drinks on their long journeys to and from the moon. A unique feature of the passenger area are the two bathrooms, again supplied by RCA Whirlpool. And it says, no, Whirlpool was chosen after the successful implementation of the feeding and waste systems on board the Gemini spacecraft in 1960. It says Ares lands at Clavius Moon Base with the addition of reaction control thrusters on four locations outside the main body and returns to the space station via FLIR computer tracking and telemetry identical to those on the Orion spaceship. And um, it, it, it's really quite, quite awesome. Uh, it, it, it really gives you some great photos uh, and shows you what things are, the hydraulic landing legs um, and, and in their retracted position. Um, it shows you the four main cryogenic thrusters, which are these, obviously. And it shows you uh, what it says is corrugated reinforced heat blasting shielding, which is uh, all of this. And then, of course, on the next page, it shows you the altitude thrusters um, and the front cockpit inclined 90 degrees to the passenger floor, which we know. And, of course, the passenger and crew entrance, which is this door here. And uh, there is a docking arm port uh, for use at a space station right there, um, which is in lieu of uh, the access door. Um, on the next page, um, it again shows you some, some detailed th uh, photos uh, of the Ares 1. Um, and it also talks, um, it talks about um, what the engines are. It says that they are cryogenic, LOX slash LH, which is liquid hydrogen, uh, multiple nozzles on the four main engines, which allowed for stable movement and blast conditions. The large cylinder directly in the center of the four main engines contains all of the uh, avionics, it says, um, which um, I did not, did not know at first. And of course, the gyroscopic devices for controlling landing and takeoff from the moon. The many conduits around the engines carry ESPS signals, sensor data, and optical data to the cockpit. So there you go. It says the sides of the sphere show attitude or reaction control, thrusters that guide via computer control, the vehicle into dock at space station or final landing on the moon's surface. And it also says that the large circular depression just north of the cockpit facing upward contains the FLIR tracking optics and camera. The central processing computer, the CPU, converts the data into a two-dimensional real-time line graphic in the cockpit for monitoring. And it also then goes on to say that the heat shields on tracks slide over the cockpit windows when leaving or re-entering Earth's atmosphere. And then it shows you some interior photos uh, of the ship here, 
which I thought was a lot of fun. And here, which is super awesome, um, which I'll, I'll try to get into, uh, is a really nice tight close-up of the cockpit. Um, so that's really pretty cool. So those are your sort of two go-tos uh, in terms of this. But then I wanted to share with you the filming miniature. So um, I've showed you, um, let me see, I've showed you this photo. So this is the first one I took. And um, you'll notice that the windows themselves um, are actually diffused completely. And that is because I believe that um, they were uh, never intended to be seen inside. So this was filmed far enough away that you can, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the next photo uh, that I wanted you to see is um, a close-up of one of the, uh, the thrusters. Uh, notice nothing is in any kind of aluminum at all, aluminum colors at all, especially around the thruster jets. Everything is in uh, the whites or the interior of the cones of the thrusters are obviously a, in a soot black. And you'll notice all the various different raised uh, elements as well. But what I want you to see, uh, look closely, um, just above the left window, the window to the left, there is a corrugated sort of heat shield. Uh, and to the right of that is a small control box. And to the right of that is a ring, a red ring. Um, now, there are several markings on this model. Uh, now, you know, we, we don't get um, any additional um, things like that uh, from, the, um, uh, from Mobius. So there's nothing for the externals, which is a real shame because we could have had a lot of, a, a lot of those detailed parts and we just didn't get them. Curiously, if you look at the 1350 um, Enterprise or several other of, of their models, I mean, even e the Eagle, the 22-inch Eagle from MPC round, round two, has an awful lot of detail and marking uh, decals for the exterior. So it's a kind of... It's kind of a bummer we didn't, you know, we didn't get anything else. But there you go. That's what we got, and that's what we'll work with. This photo is looking down on the ship. Now you'll notice, obviously, these lights are these are red. Now um, I have no other sources that would indicate that there was um, a, a a cockpit, a miniaturized cockpit, built into this model. Um, no sources to suggest that at all. Um, again, filmed from a distance, so never close enough uh, that you would, you, you would see inside this model. Uh, perhaps a mock-up on the stage you might have gotten close to for some of those close-ups. I don't know, uh, but clearly not here. But you can see quite clearly from this particular angle uh, some of the weathering, um, and uh, it is, you know, it's very subtle, but it's there. Here's another angle of the ship. This is to show you the, uh, the door. And again, there's nothing uh, special about the door in terms of t uh, tone, paint tone. Um, it is weathered slightly, uh, but it is um, a, a sort of an off-white with a little bit of graying, uh, a little gray, so um, perhaps uh, the, um, the, the, the closest I could get to it is this, um, which is the white gray from Model Air. And you could even add a few more drops of the white white to this, um, which is their, um, there's 70951 white. Um, and you can see there's, a, there's quite a starkness, uh, but a couple of uh, drops to get this somewhere between the two. Um, and, I, and I think you're in pretty good shape in terms of getting close to what um, I'm looking at um, on the actual filming miniature. Now, I am getting close for you. Um, you will notice in this uh, angle, uh, you can see some of the texture 
where um, you can see some of the, the, the paint has come off the model. Um, they've not tried to repair that, they've left it. Um, so they've given it a good cleaning and I think they've repaired it where they had to repair it, where it was um, falling apart or, threat, or being threatened to fall apart. But for the most part, they have left it alone. Um, you will notice in the center of the door, there is some, uh, some gray tonal shading. Um, that is not light. It is, it's not a light effect. Uh, it, it, it is, in fact, a slightly darker gray uh, that appears on the model itself. Moving on to a close-up of the cones. Again, um, take a look at uh, some of the weathering here. Uh, you can see where uh, there has been some aging and you can see where there has been a little bit of paint damage, but I don't see, other than a, a couple of areas, now you'll notice uh, to the left of the lower thruster plate, you will notice that there is what appears to be um, a, a repair of some kind. Uh, you do see this quite often on, on the kit, uh, uh, excuse me, on the, um, on the filming miniature. Uh, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. Again, uh, here's the docking port, but notice on the, uh, the, the left uh, sensor array, f I, uh, you know, vent, uh, there is uh, definitely a little bit of color there. It looks like a, a, a mustard, a black, and a white on three of those ribs. And then you've got some, um, a red ring, which is writing, um, again, uh, one of those smaller uh, sort of um, uh, uh, markings uh, that we, we do not have. Um, but again, you know, in close up here, you, you can see uh, a lot of the weathering process. Um, and it's, it's subtle, but it's, it's fun to see. Now, moving on to the engines, uh, this is one of the things that I, I, I think was really important to share with you. Um, now, you'll notice, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, you'll notice here, um, I'm gonna go back to myself here for a second because I wanna show you what I'm actually working on. And I'll put this in close up so you can see. Um, I'm, uh, I, I, I've added, uh, this, uh, what, I'm, what I'm calling this, um, uh, it's almost like a waffled type tape, um, and I'm adding that to the, to the, uh, to the model. Now, we've, we've not uh, done any cleanup of this. Um, we've not done uh, any kind of weathering or final painting. Uh, we've just been adding some shading and trying to sort of dial in some of these things so that we can start to see uh, from this to this uh, that we've got some, some waffling. Uh, and let me try to get you closer there. There, you can see these sort of waffled plates um, and they're all over the, uh, the, the lower casing of these engines. And so uh, that's what I'm, 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 trying, uh, I'm trying to achieve. So um, we're working on that. And um, I think that's, that, that was worth taking a look at. Um, you'll notice, obviously, uh, that there's quite a bit of, of weathering to this, but the detail is quite extraordinary. So let me, let me just move on here. Uh, excuse me, I apologize. Uh, this particular shot shows a lot more pipage going from the lower cone to the cylinder itself. Again, uh, a lot more detail than we've been given. So if you are of a mind to uh, just go crazy, here you go. This is the filming miniature. Take a, you can, you know, feel free to uh, use this to uh, your heart's content to detail up your, 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 your ship. I think it's well worth it. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm certainly going to be doing a little bit of that. And again, um, uh, on the arms here, uh, I, I wanted to sort of, let me, let me get a little closer here. Uh, you'll see all kinds of pipage and, and that sort of a thing. So there was definitely a lot more detail on the filming miniature 
uh, than uh, we are given. Here's the arm uh, and, the f and the foot itself. Now, these are quite good. Uh, they're quite well detailed, but one of the things I wanted to point out to you was there is a distinctive gray slash white uh, shifting color from the back of the foot to the front of the foot. Do you see that? And so uh, you can have a lot of fun with that, just really trying to dial in some of these details that created some of the shadows. Now, what's important about this particular shot is your cylinders. Uh, let me get my model back for a second, because I think this is a fun detail to share with you all. Uh, this is the filming miniature that you're looking at now. And this is our model. Now, you'll notice that they're absolutely clean. Do you see? They're absolutely clean. There's no rivets on them at all. There's no rivet markings at all. So if you want to get a little more Canon, uh, you're going to want to put those rivets on. Do you see? And then there's a little more pipage that you want to add. Uh, so I've started to add all of this fabric, uh, fabric tape, uh, just to sort of uh, help me um, sort of start to dial in some, some of that because uh, I... I think it's worth it for us to try and uh, get a little uh, more detailed. Uh, here's another look, um, and I'll, I'll get you closer here so you can see these rivets. Now, to the left of the cylinders, you'll see two circles and a pipe going out, of the, uh, out and down and in. That doesn't appear on any of our cylinders. They, they, they just... Um, uh, for whatever reason, it was too much in the molding process. They didn't want to add the parts. I don't know why they didn't give us this, but they didn't. But there it is, and uh, it is it is a definitely some kind of a fuel intake hose uh, or pipe, um, and it is definitely sufficiently weathered, as you can see there. Um, so again, um, uh, d definitely worth you taking taking some extra time if you want to get some details. This is fun because uh, this is one of those elements that actually appears um, not only on the filming miniature but on several of my photos that I matched it up to. So uh, this has not been augmented. Uh, this has not been added. This was there um, and uh, they've, they may have uh, sort of just cleaned it up a little bit uh, maybe touched it up a little bit, but it is uh, absolutely on the filming miniature from the Kubrick photos, and it's absolutely there. Uh, so this was not added. This is no change. I, I, I don't know where a lot of people go, oh, they changed it, or it's not the same. And it's like, uh, pretty much is, pretty much is. And you got to give, you know, look, I mean, everybody's restoration process is very different. But I assure you, when you see this up close, it's great fun. So there you go, for those who want to take a, a crack at that. And uh, here's your engine thruster plate. Um, and, and so again, uh, this is identical to the actual filming miniature. Um, what's curious though, um, and um, I wanted to point that out, is take a look at the piece from the actual kit. Here it is. And what you'll notice is uh, this, this venting uh, uh, sort of pipe here is correct. But the two here and here should have had an indent. This pipe should have come out of an indent, and it doesn't. Uh, but hey-ho, uh, we'll have fun weathering those anyway. Um, so here's the part from the kit. Here's the part from the actual filming miniature. And uh, it's not painted on. It's actually a hole. It's actually definitely a hole, and it's there. So that is that. Is that. Uh, this one I wanted to show you because um, if you take a hard look at this... Um, you know, it, it's it's crude in some ways, but it is good detail. And remember, they were filming 
you know, on, on celluloid. So uh, this would have been very soft to the eye. So you look at this and if you, you sort of squint your eyes while you're looking at it, you'll see how soft that gets. And that's exactly what it would have looked like on film. Um, but I thought it was awfully fun to see this detail up close. I mean, why not, right? So here again uh, is an extreme close-up of the thrusters. And as you can see, uh, they're not, and they were not aluminum or painted in any kind of stainless steel. They're white. Um, now, this could be because they perhaps um, in, in, in the reality of the reality would have had some kind of asbestos heat shields around them. I don't know. Uh, but definitely there was uh, soot inside the cans, but the exterior is white. It's not metal. Um, so there you go there. Uh, here is another extreme close-up of, uh, of some detail. You can see quite clearly in this photo the contrast um, that, that appears on the grayscale um, where they've added you know, some, some textured colorization to the, uh, to it. Um, and you, you can see some, uh, weathering drips as well there. Um, so I thought that was fun to share, uh, an extreme close up of that door. Um, do not be confused by the shadowing. It, there is no black inside the wind in, inside the door, uh, itself. Here's a close up of one of the thruster burners. Um, as, and you can see, um, Again, um, it is discolored, but it is in fact um, on the uh, grayscale of, of, of various different things. And finally, I just wanted to show you a, uh, another close-up of the foot, um, which is uh, quite mottled. Um, it, and it even has uh, some paint chipping, uh, as you can see there on the right side of the foot in the rear. Um, so uh, clearly they were very careful they wanted to make sure that, you know, they didn't, um, they, they tried to res restore it with, with some love. I mean, the, the, they, they didn't just go to town on this thing. Um, now, ha having said that, um, over the years, uh, whoever had this in their possession, and I have some idea, I know who had it, um, and I also know um, how it was you know, how that auction was set up, but that's for another time. Uh, but what I wanted to say about that is, is over the years, uh, some filming miniatures get destroyed or repurposed. I mean, a perfect example of that is in the Irwin Allen world with the uh, Jupiter II, uh, destroyed uh, and, and reimagined for um, another, uh, an another story. So, sadly, uh, some of these things uh, don't make it. And um, it's very possible over the years that there had been some significant repairs to this model. However, uh, from my eye, when I look at it, I think they've done an exceptional job getting it back to what it most likely looked like uh, when it was, was filmed. I mean, obviously it would have been a little cleaner, but for the most part, um, it, it, it's in very, very good shape. And I was thrilled to, to, to be able to see it. Um, so I made a decision uh, that I'm going to lock my feet in the landing position, but I am going to have it slightly raised uh, so that uh, it will be off, uh, off the floor of the, uh, of, of the clavius pad that I'm going to put it on. Um, and so that's how I'm choosing to uh, display my very own Ares 1B. So. Um, I hope you enjoyed this supplemental edition of Build the Ares 1B uh, from Movi Mobius uh, in 148 scale. Uh, I hope this was fun. Um, it was a lot of fun for me to, to sort of share this with you. And I hope you use it to, uh, as, as reference material uh, to build your very own version of this, which I hope you do. Thanks for checking this out. Be well, be safe, build something, guys. And I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.